everyone. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today we're talking all things Outlander. Season four of the Star's drama continues the story of time traveling 20th century Dr. Claire Frazier and her 18th century Highlander husband, Jamie, as they try to make a home for themselves in colonial America at the cusp of the American Revolution. Today, I'll be joined by stars Sam Hewen, Sophie Skelton, and Richard Rankin. But first, the trailer from Outlander. Do you know what lies beyond those trees? This is just the start of what America will become. People who come here in their thousands, all hoping to live the American dream. Is that the same as our dream? I suppose it is. Welcome to River On. Thank you, Auntie. North Carolina offers wealth and prosperity. I don't agree with keeping people as property. You're a lively one, you know. We must leave. Live on our own terms. It's perfect. If I can make this a good land, my presence here now can be felt by Rihanna later. Then that would be something. I'm Stephen Bonnet, sir. Be wary. Travelers in these woods are set upon by thieves and outlaws. There are savages here. Oh, ah! oh my God. Shouldn't she know the truth? Hello? I have some news about your mother. Everything's in my power. Oh, my God. Jamie! It's a silver filling, something that won't be invented for a hundred years. This will lead us to fighting in another war. We will be on the wrong side of history again. I can't change your world without you, Sassanek. Dream for some. It'll be a nightmare for others. Sometimes life takes unexpected turns. Everyone put your hands together for Sam Hugh and Sophie Skelton and Richard Rankin. Who does the voice over again? Uh, how are you guys doing today? Good, thanks. Good. Good. Yeah, good, thank uh, you. I have to say first, you have the best fans in television. I really... We know. I mean, I we really know. Love. <laughs> Whenever Outlander comes, people always show up. That must feel really good, especially going into season four. Yeah, just to have that fan yeah, loyalty. Yeah, they, they, they've... You guys have supported us for so so long now, and uh, you know we're sorry about the Dratlander again, but um, but it's amazing. You know we're very lucky on this show that they are constantly supporting us and and welcoming us, and hopefully we don't mess it up this season. Yeah, thank you guys, and we hope that the longer Dratlander is worth the wait. It's a pretty epic season. So so at the end of last season, we see uh, Sam and Claire kind of wash up on the shores of what is America. So where do we pick up now in season four? So Jamie and Claire are now in America and um, they're with their extended family. You know, they have young Ian with them and, and some of their, their friends and shipmates. And um, they're really trying to establish themselves and, and, and actually find their way back to, to Scotland. But very quickly, they realize that, that America is going to become their new home. And um, it's a land of opportunity, but also it's a land that has um, a lot to, to work through and a lot of issues and... Uh, and there's some surprises there as well, you know, sort of trying to talk around spoilers. But yeah, it's very much this season is about home for Jamie and Claire, certainly, and about them uh, laying foundations for, for years to come. What I love about Claire is that she knows the future. So she knows that the American Revolution is coming. So how does that impact how they're able to settle and make a new life? Yes, she does. And, um, you know, not only is it um, rewarding for her coming to America, you know, she has already become a, an American citizen and lived in Boston in the future, but, um, you know, they're trying to make um, a change in Brianna's life. And for Jamie, it's certainly a way for him to, to have some sort of influence on her life in the future. You know, he wants to help build and mold America into this, this new home and this great land and a land of opportunity and, and, and equal um, sort of equal rights for, for people. So, yeah, it's a way for him to, to suddenly have some sort of influence on his daughter in the future. That's why I love this show is the writing is so intricate and beautiful. The fact that he's now centuries back trying to make his the life of his daughter better, who's now living in the 1970s in Boston. So tell yeah. us what she's up to. Um, yeah, so obviously it's a very big contrast of a time. Um, we've kind of left the 60s and we're in that sort of very lighthearted, vibrant 70s vibe. Um, for Brianna, she's still sort of dealing with 
essentially the death of her mother. You know, she sort of sent her back to the past and she doesn't know, well, she won't, for she thinks, ever see her again. Um, for Bree, she's just trying to, you know, forget about it almost because really what Bree's mainly worried about is whether Claire even made it back, whether she's safe, whether she found Jamie, whether they're happy, if he moved on, you know, if they're even together. Is that the Outlander <laughs> theme tune? <laughs> Her ringtone is the Outlander theme tune. <laughs> if a ringtone is going to interrupt an interview, that's, that's fine. One. Yeah, it's allowed. I mean, right? It better be the season four one. We're though. talking about the vibrant 70s and that's pretty much the soundtrack. So. Um, yeah, so Bree's sort of... Um, you know, she had this huge loyalty and love for Frank, hence studying history to kind of follow in his footpaths and sort of bond with him. But now finding out her sort of new parentage, she's um, sort of followed her gut and she's changed to engineering. So she's now studying at MIT and... Um, does she stay yeah, in university or does she drop out? She would never drop out. She better see it all the way will. the end. She will. First degree. Good. Oh, of course. No partying. No, never. <laughs> No. Such a strict dad. Yes. Yeah. I mean, whiskey's not an alcohol, right? No. No. I mean, you don't seem to think it is. <laughs> and while Bree's mom isn't there, she does have Roger. So what role do you play in her life now in season four? <laughs> what? Well, I'm just there to serve Brianna. Um, like no, well, like a... well, Roger and Brianna, I wouldn't say that he has her. Not yet. Okay. Anyway, or vice versa. Because they, um, when you find them in season four, they are they are kind of uh, attempting a long distance relationship in a world that's much lar larger in the sixties and seventies. Transport's not so easy, even phone calls are expensive, and time consuming on a Sunday when you've got things like church and whatnot to be going to. Um, so I think. Please, will you what? just say church again for the benefit of the American audience? Church. <laughs> Thanks for that. I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> But they're both kind of li living their own separate lives when you find them at the start of season four. I think Roger hasn't had quite time to grieve of the uh, grief for the death of his father. Um, Claire and Brianna had very much consumed all of his time, and he got really wrapped up in, in in all of that and all of the drama that was surrounding that. And I think now, when you find him at the start of season four, he's quite lost. He has no anchor. He's not really sure which direction he's headed. He hopes it's Brianna, um, but that's not necessarily going to be the case because there are some hurdles for them to overcome distance only being one of them aren't there always obstacles in outlander i mean just when you think things are cooked it loves along an obstacle. smoothly we love yeah. a bit of drama don't we yeah. yeah as soon as your tears have dried we're going to start them again <laughs> i did read something though that brie may be doing some time traveling of her own what i mean what? <laughs> excuse me hang yeah. on a minute are you going somewhere <laughs> That makes long distance even worse, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, we know from the end of season two that Brianna and Roger can time travel because they hear the buzzing at the stones. But whether they do or not is up in the air. Please don't go back. That's just going to make my life so much more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so because we don't know anything for sure, we don't want any spoilers, we can speak in hypotheticals. That's the word. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So let's say that Brie gets back and she gets to meet her father, Jamie. How do you guys imagine that going? Hypothetically? Hypothetically, if they were to meet, do you think it would be a good meeting or a sentimental meeting? Or a, oh, would she be mad because he wasn't there? Um, I don't think Brie would be mad at Jamie. I think she perfectly understands the complex, to say the least, <laughs> uh, situation that they were in. I think it's an interesting topic though because I do think you know Brianna and Frank were very close and I think the idea of meeting Jamie would feel a slight betrayal in a way and also you know although you would want them to have this sort of big reunion and yes this kind of biological connection um, because they do share the same blood there is that element of you know Bree's Bree's 20 odd years old she's a stranger she's not his baby anymore she's a woman and they, they really don't know each other and again they are from different times so they do have different views on things mm. Um, so if they were to meet, it might not be as smooth as one might hope. Nicely answered, yeah. And I think, you know, Jamie obviously has always wanted to be a father and, um, you know, he hasn't been able to with Willie and, uh, and, and um, Faith and, and now Brianna as well. So, you know, for him, it's probably a bittersweet, definitely, hypothetically speaking. Yes. 
Good answers, guys. Uh, speaking of Jamie and Claire, we've seen their romantic relationship evolve over the seasons, obviously from them getting to know each other to being in separate centuries to now they're back in a place where we can really see them in this committed loving relationship so how has that changed the intimacy and their dynamic going into season four um well like you said you know uh, for th uh, three seasons jamie and claire have always sort of been struggling to be together and fighting to be together and, and now for once they're in the same place and uh, and can actually really sort of enjoy each other's company and and it's what they've wanted, you know, for a long time to, to really be at home together and start to build this family and this, this life for themselves. So it is lovely to be able to see them in some sort of do domesticity and some domestic life. Um, but as you said, it's Outlander, so it, it doesn't really last long. And will we see their passion change or fizzle? It's, it's very dead now, yeah. This yeah. old stale uh, relationship. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Stale. For Brianna's sake, I hope it's stale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, um, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's like, this is a, a beautiful um, love story and certainly Jamie and Claire, you know, uh, are always there for each other and, and it's very much part of their life. So I think if it's in the books, it'll be in the show, hopefully. Yeah. Good, yeah, <laughs> clap for that, yeah. Speaking of the books, who all read the books? Clap your hands. All right, so we've got big fans. So how much focus is there each season to making sure that you sort of follow the timeline of the books because the readers are so loyal to that? Yeah, I think as much as there's an element of trying to sort of keep, um, you know, keep the books as true for the book readers, you know, it's always difficult when you have your heart set on something and then it changes, especially because the books have been around so long. There is also that element of making it fresh and making it new and also, you know, TV things do have to change a bit. There's things in a book that work that on screen don't. Um, and at this, but at the same time, you know, it is a time travel thing. So I think if the writers change too much, then you'd get to book eight or whatever and you think, oh, we kind of needed that. So I think the writers have a hard job in that they have to kind of have all the books in their mind at once. Cause if they do want to chop and change something, it does have a knock on effect. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, you know, if there are scenes that you might be disappointed aren't in the season, there definitely are new ones to compensate. Um, so hopefully and we do, we, make up we do it. stick to the books, you know, as much as we can, but I think what's great about this season is that we do, there's, there's some surprises in there for fans of the books, which I think is great because you guys know the books, but there's some things in there that are also part of Diana Gabaldon's world, but you weren't expecting. So um, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you like it. I wanna talk about this new world a little bit because um, at least in the first episode I saw, you're dealing with all of these things in the American history, like slavery and the native people. And it's been interesting to see how Jamie and Claire navigate that they really are trying to stay on the right side of history. So was that sort of interesting to explore? Because I, I was really impressed the show handled it that way. Yeah, they're, they're big issues, you know, and I think they're, they're big things to discuss, but it's, um, it's very much part of the world they're in now. And Jamie and Claire are always trying to, to sort of circumnavigate history and trying to change history. And, um, and we know there's, there's great change coming and there's great things gonna happen, but um, yeah, they're trying to find their place in this new world. And um, Claire obviously is more, is more sort of clued into to what's gonna happen. But Jamie is a man of his time, but yet he's quite forward thinking and certainly doesn't want any part of, of um, certainly the, the slavery side. And um, so it, it's been a kind of learning curve for us as well as, as British people to learn about American history. Yeah. What would be the most inter interesting thing you've learned, Richard, about American history from doing this show? I, th I mean, I don't know that Roger gets particularly involved in the American history part. You, you know, you find him, he's still very much happy and living his life in Oxford. Um, <laughs> obviously, one of the most fascinating things uh, that I think I'd learned was how to say dog face and mohawk which is a hat on Gunsa. I just happened to have heard that on set one day, so. I, I don't know what that dog face? Yeah, that's, that's how you say dog face in Mohawk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hat on Gunsa. Actually, I learned a few words in Mohawk. There's Desda, which means stop. <laughs> just floating around on set, you know. We had, yeah. a lot of, um, we had a lot of First Nations over there working on season four. I found them fascinating. Got yeah. chatting to them about their culture, about their history. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, hugely fascinating. So I very much enjoyed that aspect of season four. Yeah. How about you, Sophie? Um, I mean, so not so much about the American history side, because again, obviously Bree's sort of safe and happy in the vibrant 70s, but 
we were saying earlier, you know, there's one of the characters in the book who originally was written as this sort of very light, blonde, um, a little bit ditzy, and we've changed that to be um, a woman of color, which I think is a really nice change, just to bring the sort of parallel between, you know, what Jamie and Claire are almost in an awful way having to be okay with, because obviously Claire wants to change this world and, you know, what was taken as sort of the norm at the time in terms of slavery is something that obviously we nowadays and as time went on really resented and, you know, felt awful about. And But there's nothing really that Claire can do because she can't, you know, she'd stick out like a sore thumb and then she'd be killed and then there's nothing to change anyway because she wouldn't be there to do it. Um, so it's nice to show the parallel with Brie in terms of... Um, you know, sort of having, she was probably one of two people studying engineering at the time, and it's her and this um, sort of African-American girl. And I think it's really cool because it just shows how much time has changed. Um, and I guess it, it gives a little bit of hope in terms of what Jamie and Claire, you know, did do or could do. How about you? Any interesting tidbits about American history you didn't know? Um, you know, well, I think our writers and producers were very... Um uh, very keen to to research the Native American side, especially, and and we, as we as Richard said, we had a you know over a hundred um, Cree and Cherokee, and I think uh, all from uh, First Nation people, but they were from uh, Canada, I think, mostly. But um, they brought this amazing culture, and uh, the similarities actually uh, are quite striking between you know what happened to the Scots and and the, the clans in Scotland and to the Native Americans in America. So I think Jamie certainly sees that parallel and there are two warrior cultures and have these traditions that that I think he respects and there's kind of this unwritten um, mutual respect between the two after you know what happens at first um, but yeah it's uh, it was a really interesting culture to, to get to know about and uh, it really brings a completely different flavor to, to Outlander than we've seen before and it's set in South Carolina but you guys didn't film there right and uh, North Carolina um, oh, no North Carolina. we were just outside Cumbernauld. Cumbernauld, which is <laughs> Scotland. Remarkably, looks remarkably similar just to Just off America. the motorway between Glasgow and Edinburgh. It's so glamorous. <laughs> yeah. yes. I was going to say, it must be a similar enough terrain. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I think there's a story I'm probably not allowed to tell, but there was uh, one of our Native Americans um, got off a horse one day and an, an arrow somehow ended up in his leg and um, he was taken to hospital. And I could just imagine the Scottish Highland nurse standing there as this Native American full, full, uh, full outfit comes walking in with an arrow in her leg. I'm sure no one believed her story that night. Um, but it was kind of fun, you know, in Scotland we have this, you know, it is remarkable. The scenery there is actually quite similar to, to, to uh, North Carolina. That's awesome. Well, I could ask you more questions, but I know that the audience has a few. So who has the mic first? Right there. Hi. Um, my no, question. Turn your phone off. Oh, I do. You don't have to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, my question is: Each of you have been inhabiting your character for various periods of time. Sam, obviously, you the longest. Is there for each of you a particular aspect of your character's personality that you find most challenging to portray? That's a good question. I I think, oh, that's a good question. I think sometimes, and maybe this speaks for Sam a bit too, I don't know, but the phrases can be, if you hadn't noticed, slightly hot-headed. Mm. No, um, that was going to be my answer. Sometimes in a scene you can feel a little bit bipolar because one minute they're fine, the next minute they have gone off the rails with red-hot anger and it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so maybe that. I know, I was, I was actually thinking the same thing, you know, and certainly Jamie in season one and two, you know, he's younger and he's more tempestuous and, and more quick to fire off the handle and not think about his consequences. And as he's got older, I hope, you know, we see that he's actually become, you know, more experienced and, uh, and more mature, but they do have this rather stubborn uh, side to them, uh, which is quite interesting. Whereas the Mackenzie's... You know, just, uh, <laughs> Mackenzie's rule. I don't want to... <laughs> don't <help>. stop. <laughs> um, Hashtag. <laughs> I think, um, I don't know, I feel quite, um, Roger was a bit of a challenge and I also feel very lucky to have been presented with that opportunity at the same time because he's very difficult, uh, very difficult, very different and difficult to any character that I think I've ever played before. He's very reserved, he's very mild-mannered, he's very considered, he's quite traditional, he's very of his time. I think that's, um, for me, approaching him physically, vocally and just that attitude that, you know, the way he presents himself was was quite challenging and I had to put a lot of thought um, 
and kind of development into that side of Roger because he's nowhere near as cool as I am. So <laughs> I had to really tone that down quite a lot. Weren't you wearing a, he's also a woolen sweater today? Sexy. I was wearing a sweater today. <laughs> For you eagle-eyed fans, you'll probably notice that I've changed. <laughs> Out of that sweat. Well, that was very but Roger. The, the cash remain the same. Yeah, I've been I've been getting abuse from Sam and Sophie for how I dress. So I was just channeling Roger. You see, it wasn't me. It worked. <laughs> Next question. Hi. Um. So obviously cool there's makeup. a lot of hi. <laughs> sorry. That's very not shocking. makeup. <laughs> um. There's obviously a lot of stuff that's going on um, throughout season four in various different places. But out of everything that's going on, who has the most difficult journey uh, emotionally for this next upcoming season? I think we will all answer our own character here, but... Uh, <laughs> Rollo? Yeah. <laughs> He's very needy, needs a lot of attention. A lot um, like Roger. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I think I think season four season four is a big one for all of the characters involved, and I think the journey that each of them go through. I think they're all really tested to the absolute limits. They have a lot of trials before them um, in terms of as individuals and the relationships go through a lot of stress. Roger and Brianna are put through a lot. Um, Jamie and Claire will also get quite an ordeal in season four, and there's there's a lot of new characters that are introduced in season four that you kind of follow a bit through the season. So I mean, it's epic, it's huge. Season four's there's a, there's a lot in it, and it's um, it's stressful at points. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I feel like we'd all say our own characters because once you're in their head, you feel like they're the most hard done by. Um, but I do feel like most of what could happen or go wrong in a person's life happens to Brianna this season. So, oh, so it's all about you. She really, yeah, yeah. I, tried to, I, mean, I tried to do the whole cash thing, but yeah. No, but like, poor Brie, like she really is, yeah, you know? Yeah, poor Brie. Don't what start with me, don't start with me. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna have to put up with. <laughs> I, I watched the first episode and uh, Jamie and Claire got put through it. So right now I'm thinking they have to deal with a lot in season four. Um, like always, you know, the, there is a lot to put out with, but um, yeah, I think it has, which everyone does have, you know, quite a journey, but Bree's one, I think, for me, and there's parallels in Jamie's journey, which without, doesn't give away too much, but there's there's a lot of parallels there, and I think you know, her story is remarkable, and actually, you'll see Sophie does an incredible job this season. It's amazing. Um, Richard, not so much. <laughs> Phoning it I in. Have I turned think. up. He turned up. I paid him to say that. Thank Can't you. Win them all. <laughs> Can't win them all. Next question. Hi, was it difficult to transform Scotland into 18th century North Carolina? And did any of you get the chance to visit North Carolina before filming season four? Uh, Got to take that as a no. <laughs> I've been in North Carolina. Um, it wasn't for research, I've been there. Um, I think our, our, our design team are incredible, incredibly detailed. Um, John Gary Steele does an amazing job transforming various parts of Scotland on location to, to uh, you know, replicate North Carolina. I was stunned seeing some of the some of the sets that we had to work on. It was amazing. In Boston? In Boston, yes, that's what I meant. I think, you know, so obviously, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of forests involved this season, and uh, that's probably pretty much where I spend most of my time. But um, what I loved about it, and again, John did, uh, Gary, John Gary Steele did, did a great <laughs> Um, it was uh, watching Fraser's Ridge like grow. The settlement goes from being, you know, a lean-to and a little cabin to to really growing into, a, you know, a full settlement by the end of the season. And I think that's uh, really cool because we're setting that up. I think for for future seasons, you know. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, I did also visit North Carolina before we started, and uh, I went to 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 near where Diana said Fraser's Ridge would be, and uh, it was remarkable how similar it was in landscape. And one more question. Hi, how's it going? Hi. Hey. I have a question about chemistry um, between actors. I failed. I I'm more of a physics. I'm more of a school. I was like, this Can is my territory. Oh, no, I Let me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm curious to know if you think it's something that you build through character development, or is it something that you, as an actor, feel um, a certain I don't know, affinity with the corresponding actor? Is it, is it an attraction, whether it's uh, personality-wise or uh, physicality, or is it a chemistry that you build through character development? 
that makes sense. Oh, that's such a... I mean, I think chemistry... The term chemistry, when applied to actors, it seems like such a broad term for just two actors that work really well together. And I think that can be many different factors. It can be because they have a natural kind of attraction in the first place um, through working well with each other. Like Sophie and I, I think we always seem to be kind of on the same page in terms of where we think our characters are headed, uh, what we think of the relationship. And that in itself can generate or stimulate a chemistry between the actors. I think there are many factors involved in what makes that work. Um, and I think those are just a few of them. Yeah, I mean, I think as Richard said, you know, as actors you go through, or often you go through something called a chemistry read, where you meet um, with the actor who, I mean, in my case on this, was already cast in the role. So I met with Richard, so did a few other girls, and you do a read through, I met with Katrina. Don't meet, didn't meet with this one. I wasn't interested. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, I feel like Goodness. we should have sat down and had a chemistry test. Yeah. Like, given lots of different things. In the, yeah, like I mean, I would have annihilated you. Changed colours. <laughs> worked out if it was alkaline or acidic. Yeah. And then you pass and you get the job. Get the job, yeah. But also, uh, like what you were saying as well, it does build over time. It, it gets better, it should, or it should get strong. I don't know, it might deteriorate over time, but, I mean, in our case, it gets stronger over time. You start to learn how the other actor works. You know, and how and how to work better and more efficiently together. So well, I think that's the thing. I think it's a good mix. If you you know, some people just naturally have a chemistry and can work well together. But I think also, as Richard was saying, you know, you can have the best chemistry on screen, but if you don't have the same idea for how a scene's going to go, then it's still not going to work. So it's kind of a mix of the two things. You know, just sort of yeah, having the same sort of plan for a scene, if you like, and sort of being on the same page as to where your actors are. I feel like the best chemistry this season is Katrina Balfe and Rollo. Because it's negative. It's funny. She, she's, she's not the biggest fan, I would say. And Because uh, Rollo's not very professional. No. he. he and it's funny because I saw a picture of um, Kat and Rollo um, on Instagram. And then everyone was like, oh my God, look at them. They're so friendly. They're so if best friends. And we were like, knew. oh, if only you knew. knew. <laughs> they won't share the same trailer. It's, it's yeah. not good. He's a bit of a diva, Rollo. He is a bit of a diva. Thank you. Well, whatever you guys are doing, the chemistry, it's working, and it continues to work. And I only got to see the first episode, but guys, buckle up. It's going to be a wild fourth season. If you guys want to check out the premiere, it's on November 4th on Stars. Guys, give it up for Sam Hewitt. Thank, so you, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.